I happened to make a comment one day, and I said, Jimmy, that's a nice jacket, man. He says, I'll give it to you, man, I guess. I don't know, I didn't say it for that reason. <laughs> oh my God. When I, when I first got the call to do the London Palladium, it was uh, very exciting. <clears throat> so anyway, you go there to the London Palladium, and, uh, and of course the people in the show are sitting in the audience uh, during your rehearsal, and all the people sitting in the audience are all well-known people, etc. You know, that people are going to be in the show, but I was the star that night, you see. So I was very thrilled, but I had to rehearse and I, I was so embarrassed because now you're getting somebody who's not had any experience going in the front of professional people and trying to make a, you know, uh, make a go of it. So when I walked on stage to rehearse to sing Release Me, I kept making up the, the lyrics, you know, like, please regrease me, let me go. And the audience were smiling a little bit. Oh, that broke me down, made me feel more comfortable, you know. And because uh, I always liked the laugh. I was a bit of a joker, you know, in those days, always pranking around it but uh, it sort of broke the spell of nervousness and and that night when I went on and I performed for for all those people of course the song wasn't hit at that particular time but uh, the very next day it was selling in the region of 80,000 a day and then of course it moved up 90, 100, 127,000 a day at the most I ever sold and I used to call up myself and say how many did we sell today you know I was so excited in those days, so the, the whole live shows, particularly in England and so on, were kind of a different situation, right? Because it was more like a cavalcade of stars. Oh, yeah. Oh, oh, yeah, it was a, a whole bunch of people would go out on tour together, yeah, yeah. I mean, there'd be about eight stars on one show, yeah, yeah. Jimmy, they were going to put Jimi Hendrix uh, on a, uh, you know, establish him in, in England, and they wanted to put him with, uh, with artists that are well-known in, in Europe, so... I was one of them, and I think uh, uh, at the mean at that particular time, his name was Cat Stevens, and Cat was on the show. And it's it, it just a wonderful; they were wonderful people, you know, were great people. And uh, at one point, on one of the one of the dates, uh, Jimmy, uh, I, my guitarist didn't show up, mm-hmm. and Jimmy said, "Don't worry, man, I'll play for you." I said, you can't be out in the open play. You're, you know, you're, you're star in your own right. He said, he said I, I tell you what I'll do. I'll play behind the curtain. So, and it was like listening to three guitars behind the curtain when he played. What, and if I only, and I to think to myself, why didn't I record that? You know, who's to know? You know, uh, there again, who's to know that the he's going to be taken so early in his life? You know. But uh, I, I just wished I'd recorded it anyway, you know. But I even had a tape recorder. Wow. <laughs> but Jimmy, Jimmy was quite quite an unusual character even then. You know, not only used to burn his guitars, but he used to smash them up and all that business. But basically, he was a real nice human being. Because I, I happened to make a comment one day, and I said, Jimmy, that's a nice jacket, man. <laughs> He says, I'll give it to you, man, I guess. I don't know, I didn't say it for that reason. He wanted to take it off his back and give it to me. I wish I'd have taken it now. At least I'd have had something very special from a very special man. Absolutely. You mentioned before also this Cat Stevens uh, was one of the artists that you were on the road with. Yeah, Yusuf, Yusuf. <laughs> yeah, yeah. It, we, were, we were playing at the, at the Palladium. He said to me, he came up to me. Oh, I, first of all, we were having, a, we were, I was having a little drink at that particular time, and it was a little triple second and cognac, just a little bit like that, not much, just to warm up my throat before I walked on stage. I've been doing that all my life, and I never get drunk on stage because I, I think you have to be a responsible person when you walk on stage, you know. So I just have a little something to warm me up, just to kickstart me. So uh, Cat came into the room and he says, "Can I have one of those?" I said, "Cat, you can't have this. It might be too strong for you, man." You know, he's not. Nah, I can handle it. You know, and he used to use a gun, you know, a pistol, and he would twirl it on stage and put it in his pocket. He had this. He had this song about the, you know, about the pistol. And I said, 
are you sure? Anyway, I gave it to him. When he walked on stage, he dropped the gun. <laughs> but, you know, he's such a wonderful person. He, after the show, yeah, you know, he said to me, Ange, he said, oh, you know, I'm out of cash, man. I, could you lend me some money? I said, well, what do you want? What do you want, uh, Cat? I don't have a lot, but I'll, I, whatever you... He says, I just need five pounds. He said, I'll give you a check. He wrote me a check for five pounds, and uh, I gave him the five pounds. And um, that was it. And that five pounds is still on my wall in my office right now. I have never, ever cashed. I didn't know how great he was going to be, but I didn't care. I wasn't going to cash it anyway, you know, because he was a friend. I try to be the best I can and try to understand. Angel on my shoulder, the earth beneath my feet. I'm a lucky, lucky man.